If you've ever met someone who claims they know George Strait is the nicest guy in country music, that person is lying. It's not that he's not a well-mannered country gentleman who would give you the shirt off his back. He probably is. But very few people outside of his inner circle have talked to him in like 35 years. Reclusive isn't quite the right word. George is more selective about the company he keeps. And before you start judging, know this. He's got his reason, and it's a dang good one. I'm Billy Dukes with Taste of Country, and if you're a fan of the Country King's music or his quiet way of taking care of business, tell us why in the comments section below, and then subscribe for more secret history. George truly does let the music do the talking, with just a few words spoken between songs when he's on stage, and even fewer spoken publicly once he hops down. Here's what happens when you search George Strait Interview on YouTube. There's one from 2019, but, but that's actually just somebody filming an old television interview and uploading it. Next is one from eight years ago, uh, three years ago, 10 years ago for the Academy of Country Music. And if you scroll down further, you find Bob Visits George Strait. That finds a young king talking about being convinced to do Pure Country, the movie from 1992. And there's this gem from circa 1982. The big exception is the New Yorker's behemoth of a spread on him from 2017 that if you're a fan, you need to see, so we dropped a link in the description section. It's there that George reveals why he quit doing interviews saying, quote, I just kind of shut down after his daughter Jennifer was killed in a car accident in 1986. I just didn't feel like talking about it, so I quit doing interviews. Jennifer was George and wife Norma's oldest child, born in October 1972. She died at age 13 in a one-car accident in San Marcos, Texas, and it's long believed, although never confirmed, that she's tributed in the song Baby Blue from Straits' If You Ain't Lovin', you Ain't Living album from 1988. Baby Blue. So, what's George Strait really like? If you've met him, share a memory in the comments section. Don't be shy. When you watch some of those old interviews, you find a man much more comfortable on stage than in an easy chair talking about his personal life. He's kind and confident and loves golf and his family, but he fumbles a little with his words and darts his eyes around. Taste of Country has talked to the king one time, but it was very much focused on an upcoming Las Vegas residency show with Casey Musgraves, who he's a fan of, by the way. She actually might have done it best, if we're being honest. In February 2017, they sat down and joked about songs that never went number one before she got him to admit why he passed on Tennessee Whiskey. You know, Dean pitched that to me in the 80s. I think it was around 85 or 84 or something, and I just didn't... didn't Wasn't your thing? I missed it, yeah. <laughs> All relevant links are in the description section. I'm Billy Dukes, and this has been another episode of The Secret History of Country Music. If you liked this episode on George, you may enjoy one from the last season about the lucky break that started his career. Be sure to subscribe and review this episode below, and as always, thanks for watching.